Hello, my name is Alfredo Reis Deus and today I'm going to talk a bit about the technical stuff uh, here in the tank. Um, there are things that I like a lot in the hobby and there are things that I'm not so crazy about. Uh, one of the things I'm not so crazy about is uh, plumbing. I don't like tubes and uh, plumbing and drilling holes. Um, and another is chemistry. So I try to keep the things as simple as I can from the, those two perspectives. So this tank has no sump. And um, the reason is not just that I don't like uh, to complicate stuff and have plumbings, is also because I like the look of a tank floating in the air. Um, when there is a piece of furniture, a solid piece of furniture below the tank, bah, I kind of don't like it so much. It looks uh, like a really heavy piece of furniture that you have uh, in your room. Uh, so, I have these constraints. I don't have a sump and uh, in terms of chemistry I can't go very far with uh, SPS because for me that releases hell in the tank. Uh, as soon as you have to deal with the high consumption of calcium and certain amounts of nutrients, hell breaks loose and so I try to stay away from uh, uh, those corals. I have uh, just a couple but they are not very difficult to keep. So what does this tank have? This tank uh, has um, a hang on back skimmer, a Deltec MCE 600 and it's working very well. Um, I have no complaints about it. Uh, well that's not exactly true uh, because this is, is already um, a piece of furniture with some with some, um, excuse me, okay, <clears throat> okay, as I was saying, um, so, uh, the complaints I have about the skimmer, uh, the pump can get a bit noisy at times, um, it has a good thing because it has a media box inside the skimmer and that helps um, a lot because not having a sump um, makes it difficult to include uh, stuff in the tank and so that's the place where I place the carbon and carbon is a lifesaver in a tank like this filled with anemones because anemones sometimes have bad encounters with pumps anemones sometimes spawn and so um, having carbon uh, always at hand and always uh, also in the media box in the skimmer is a real lifesaver um, other than that, I have a refugium and hang on back. Um, it's not doing much now, to tell you the truth, because um, this tank has um, a little bit of, uh, of the most common plagues. It has a little bit of cyano, it has a little bit of dinos, um, it has some aptasias, it has asterinas, so all of them are here and um, I try to keep them just uh, under an acceptable level for me. I don't try to eradicate them. So, um, but the refugium, in fact, also serves as a place to place media. And I place there some GFO to keep phosphates under control, which is something, to tell you the truth, that I check a couple of times a year. Um, but I. So I'm not very religious in the placement of the GFO. Uh, excuse me again. Excuse me, it's my dogs going in and out. And they have to open the door. Um, more equipment. So on top of the, of the hang on backs um, refugium, I also have um, a UV unit and it's uh, running with a very slow flow um, that I just installed the skimmer I normally don't have it in because I added uh, Magnifica you can see it right here behind me and um, it's the first time I'm dealing with uh, such a um, risky anemone for me at least it has a reputation of being very difficult especially during the first times and um, they are very prone to uh, infections and so I thought it would be um, again sorry ah, 
sorry. Um, <laughs> So, uh, I was saying that um, I kept the UV just to be a bit on the safe side and reduce the possibilities of um, infection. I think she's doing this on purpose. As I was saying, uh, I use the UV mainly for that. For, um, to, to, it's a little um, way of reducing the amount of bacteria um, uh, in suspension in the water because I'm running it really very slow so the water there's a small pump in the back that pumps water uh, into the UV unit and then from the UV unit drops the water directly uh, into the refugium so in fact it's the UV unit that feeds the refugium and then of course the refugium by gravity falls back inside the tank the idea behind the refugium was mainly to supply uh, pods for the tank. There are many fish here that appreciate them and they're always on the hunt. And this is in fact uh, now uh, a tank with um, not that much rock. So uh, the idea is for the refugium to supply pods um, to the animals living here. I have also an auto feeder that feeds four times per day uh, and it feeds a mixture of uh, flake food um, some pellets uh, baby brine shrimp uh, eggs that are already decapsulated and whatever I have at hand I place it inside the auto feeder and it feeds a small amount four times per day um, the idea is of course to make the fish happier they happy if they eat many times a day um, second, also reduce aggression between them um, and third uh, and also very important to try to prevent some of the fish here that are considered reef safe with caution um, well to try to reduce the, the odds that they are going to start to pick on anything that they shouldn't at least not that they shouldn't that I don't want them to pick inside here the tank namely I have here a couple of clams um, a Deraza and the Maxima the Maxima is really really small it's maybe a little over uh, an inch so it's very small I hope uh, she can grow here and um, concerning other equipment of course the light I have this uh, max spec razor for five years and during these five years um, she, it has been on different tanks because uh, many of the animals here have gone from different tanks to other tanks and I've been changing the format of the aquarium from time to time and so this, has, this fixture has been with me for five years um, during these five years it had a problem with the power module which uh, I ordered a new piece and replaced and um, more recently, I, because I changed to a tank that is 90 centimeters by 19 centimeters by 50 or in inches 36 by 36 by 20 uh, I had to place this feature in a diagonal way <laughs> and also that restrains me from uh, placing corals wherever I want but it has improved a lot since I upgraded uh, the light pads to the 180 um, version the 180 version also has um, a, a wider degree, the lenses have a wider degree, 120 degrees. Um, and so that had two effects, two great effects. One, the light effect uh, can reach, well, in small amounts, all the corners of the tank now, in small amounts. Uh, second, there's absolutely no disco effect, zero you can see it's not possible to see different colors here the colors are blending very well nonetheless uh, these are LED pads LED pads um, they provide a kind of epileptic fit inducing shimmer uh, it looks very electric and that is made worse by of course the agitation on top of the tank with the pumps um, and so 
Okay, this uh, another thing I was not very pleased with the upgrade of the fixture was the overall color of the of the tank. For me, uh, it took a long while to get used to the to this color. The previous uh, lead pads that I had here were 10k uh, because I prefer a more natural look during daytime. And this uh, fixture now has um, a more purplish look. When I first uh, tried the fixture with the new pads, I thought this looks like Barbie's tank. Everything looks pink. And so um, it's something I'm not happy. And not being happy, uh, it meant that I recently began looking for another light solution because obviously, uh, for every reason, starting with the tank dimensions and the color and the shimmer, this is not the fixture I want. But I've been researching for a few weeks and to tell you the truth, the fixture that I want doesn't exist yet. And it's, I'm sorry to say it's stupid because the technology is there. I checked the Gizman Aurora, which is a mix of LEDs and um, T5s. And I have two criticisms. One, they of have the LEDs in pads. The LEDs in pads means that the shimmer you get is this electric fit inducing, uh, epileptic fit inducing shimmer. No, uh, they should stop it because it looks uh, very unnatural. Um, it looks like an 80s bad video movie effect. Um, and so they had uh, the LEDs on pads. Second, the ratio between T5s and the LEDs um, made that the T5s uh, completely overwhelmed the LEDs. So although there was that bad shimmer, the bad shimmer would go away uh, to a great extent when you add uh, the, the, all the channels up at 100%. So the Gizman, it was, uh, although it's a, uh, I think it's a very well designed and constructed, for me as this was, for me personally. I also looked into the castles and some Chinese knockoffs that are around here. And um, of course they got the shimmer right, because they, um, what they have is a, a one point source of light. Instead of having the LEDs in pads, they have the LEDs coming from a very small area. And that creates a beautiful shimmer. But once again, when you look at the tank that only has that, that kind of light, it's a very hard light. Uh, because it misses some sort of fill lights. It misses T5s on the side. So why the heck hasn't Castle come up with that? Because uh, it's too dramatic, too strong, the effect of those lights. And of course, especially for people with SPS, um, that creates lots of shadowing. Um, and um, they could get around it by doing what another option that I researched did, which was the new max spec recurve. The recurve has those two wings with LEDs that they uh, place the diffuser along those wings that create a very, of course, diffuse light in the aquarium. But there are also a few problems with that fixture uh, from my perspective. Once again, the LED pads. The LEDs in a big area create an ugly shimmer. Second, the power on the wings on those LED, two LED strips is too weak. Third, they chose a crazy array of colors for, this, for those strips. So they also don't have it right. Of course, I could uh, think about um, a solution because Gizman also has this solution. It, it's a stunning light, which combines the, um, of course, the, it's, I believe it's called the Spectre. And it combines the, um, metal halides with dimmable T5s. Okay, they're getting there. At least the T5s are controllable. But what you really need to do, in fact, is get some sort of Castle AP700 with the two spotlights and 
some nice flat strips well balanced on the side so I guess I'm going to have to wait maybe one year or two for such a fixture to come out because it's something that uh, almost everybody wants they want a strong point light that gives a beautiful shimmer and second they want the whole tank to be uh, in a way well lit and also don't have a crazy shimmering effect which is too strong on the castles so what did I do? I just purchased another <laughs> of this fixture that I don't like um, what, why did I do that? because I could get them uh, relatively cheap now in second hand and uh, also it will enable me to try something out that I always wanted to try which is to give a, a greater sense of depth to the tank by having the two fixtures, one closer to the front, one closer to the back I'll be able to put the um, uh, cooler tone in the back, a more bluish look and uh, I intend uh, through that to intend a larger sense of depth in the, in the aquarium because when you look underwater the further away you look the bluish it gets so I'm going to try that, I'm still waiting for the fixture to arrive well, continue to talk about equipment. I have three pumps. Um, I have one uh, Jibao RW4, one RW8, and the Coral Box QP9. Uh, each has a different function here. So the the main function, in, in truth, of the RW4, which is always running at 100% on that side, is to to keep life support when power goes out and unfortunately that happens a lot here and so that pump is connected to a battery backup that keeps the, the tank running um, at least the, the pump running uh, and creates surface movement to prevent the, the tank from being completely uh, depleted of oxygen and so it's been a lifesaver really it's something that I can't recommend enough to have some sort of um, redundant systems and safety systems for whatever things that uh, may happen um, you have lots of money and more important uh, love for the things that you have here and the amount of work you put here so trying to invest sometimes more in redundant systems instead of a new fish or a new coral might be a better policy so one of the things I have here for that matter is a battery backup and before next winter I plan to buy a generator a small generator just enough to keep the tank running so uh, that RW4 over there pushes uh, of course water 100% 24 hours a day in that direction along the back side of the tank and also uh, when powers go down uh, power go goes down uh, it keeps running at a slower speed and I believe that that um, battery can keep it running maybe for almost two days um, behind me there are the RW4 and the QP9 the, I'm sorry the RW8 and the QP9 the RW8 uh, is pushing uh, water in a di diagonal of the, the, the tank. Cubes are hard tanks to plan for in terms of circulation. If you use a, a too strong pump, very easily you start to get the sand completely scattering all over the way. So that's the main reason why I have the, the RW4 the 8 pointing in a diagonal way from the back corner to the front corner um, well delta of course hits a bit uh, the magnifica here which is also a good thing um, and that pump nowadays because of the magnifica is running at 100% uh, there, I had it before at um, some sort of uh, reef crest mode which varies a long time but now I, I, I really need um, a strong flow for especially the Magnifica and then I have the QP9 behind me which is responsible for the creation of the wave motion and it's been enough nowadays if I would go to buy pumps I would for sure get a bit stronger pumps because 
now as you see I have to run all the pumps at 100% with the exception of the QP9 that is running of course at 100% but in wave mode um, other than that I have of course a heater and beyond having a heater I also have a heat alarm that uh, starts screaming whenever the temperature goes too low or too high um, and uh, beyond that in terms of equipment there's also a spotlight <laughs> uh, helping the max spec nowadays um, uh, pointed directly at the Magnifica and I think the, it's helping to keep the Magnifica in place because it's like the carrot in front of the donkey and the Magnifica, Magnifica chases the the 12 watts spot because it's also a um, Around, it's a very warm tone for that spot. It's a six, I believe it's around six thousand and five hundred K. And um, Magnificas are known for liking this kind of um, this kind of, of spectrum. Um, they they love all the light that you can give them. Um, what more? In terms of well, as you see, the tank has not doesn't have a lot of equipment but um, in terms of maintenance what do I do well I have another piece of equipment I have a dosing pump um, but the only thing I dose is caulk and it's um, I dose caulk with vinegar which helps to uh, uh, transform caulk in a use directly usable way for the corals Instead of just dissolving it in water, I dissolve it in vinegar and then dissolve it in the RODI water. And um, I, this tank has an evaporation normally between 3 and 4 liters. And so that's what I dose every day from... A, uh, I, I normally premix around 20, 25 liters of, um, of RODI water. I normally premix um, 25 liters of RODI water um, that I mix with caulk and vinegar. Um, and that is done uh, always um, at night. When the lights begin to go out, the dosing pump goes in and it goes until maybe uh, around 9 in the morning. Um, I also have a pH monitor. I don't calibrate it because really I'm only interested in seeing variations. Um, so if I notice that there is something, a sudden drop or a sudden rise, uh, then I'll, I'll check what's going on. It's like uh, something that helps me see if there's something wrong with the tank. Um, other than that, I think that's it. I try not to complicate too much. Um, and some of the stuff here, in fact, has been with me for, um, I think, since 2006. And that's been following me around. And um, I, uh, later, I'm planning on making a video about all the um, animals inside. Going from fish to corals to anemones to whatever is inside. Why they are here? How did they get here? What do they do? good for the tank or not, I'll discuss that in the uh, next video.